Okay, so today I'm going to walk you through how to stitch together uh, three different REST resources that are uh, tied together in a way into a single graph, um, all protected by Tyke. And the three REST um, resources are all available online, so uh, should be available for anyone. We're, we have a, a users uh, resource and uh, returns a list of users. If I do an ID, we get that single resource. Now, uh, a user can have posts. So let's open this up. Uh, and then a sub resource of, of that, if I do posts, we can see all the posts that belong to this user. And then uh, the final level is each post can have comments. So here's a, a post ID is 41. So uh, if we copy this uh, resource, so now if we go to comments uh, and we do post ID, and we go to five, we can see that, uh, excuse me, uh, let's do 41. Here's all the comments that belong to this uh, post. Okay, now we're gonna stitch those all together. So instead of three different calls, we're gonna make it a single graph call, okay? So let's start with type. We're gonna add a new API. I'm gonna call it composed GraphQL. And then we're gonna compose a new GraphQL service. Configure API, uh, it's called composed. And then we're just gonna switch this to keyless and save. We'll go in here. Next up, uh, let's start building the schema, okay? So uh, we don't need a mutation, I'll get rid of that. We're just gonna keep the query. And first we're gonna start by adding a new user type. The user, let's take a look. Um, it has a, an ID, a name, a username, and an email. So the ID is an ID. The name is a string. The email is also a string. And the last one is a uh, username is a string. Okay, there's a bunch of other ones we can go to, but that's okay. That's enough for our example. Now we have our user, we have a query. So the, I'm going to change the default query into the user query. And the user query takes an ID, which is an ID. This is mandatory. And we're going to mark that with an exclamation mark. And the type is a user. Good. Uh, we're done for now. Switch over to data sources. Uh, here's our user object. Here's our query. We see user. It says data source is required. So let's uh, edit that. We see our ID argument. All is good. Next up, data source. We're going to define a data source. Data source type. Uh, there's a couple. There's Tyke REST API, Tyke GraphQL APIs. Those are APIs in Tyke already protected. Uh, but we'll just use a, a new, brand new REST resource. And then here, we're going to copy this API and paste it here. Now, instead of five, we're going to use uh, Golang templating. That's indicated by the brackets. Now here, we're going to use uh, dot arguments to access the uh, arguments that are available in the data model that we just looked at, and then dot ID for the name of that argument that we had uh, uh, made. Method is get, and we're done. Update field. Uh, that's it. So now if I go under playground, we can actually write a query and we can do uh, the user query and um, we're going to ask for the name. We're going to ask for uh, the ID, excuse me, the name and the email. And that's it. Notice this is complaining. If I hover, it says uh, the user requirement uh, requires an ID. We didn't provide one. So let's provide one. ID is uh, five. OK. And then play. And there we go. So a GraphQL resolver um, took our graph query and uh, resolved it into the REST call to our upstream with the ID of five. And if we compare that, here's Chelsea at Lucio at Annie. Uh, Chelsea, Lucio at Annie, the ID is five. Excellent. We don't need that anymore. So now let's tie in posts. I want to see all the posts that belong to this user. Okay. Um, so now we go back to our schema. Now we have a new type. It's called uh, post. And a post has a user ID, which is an ID, and ID, a post ID, which is an ID. Uh, then it has a title, which is a string, and it has a body, which is a string. Okay. Now, if we go back to uh, um, actually here, we'll just do it here. The user now has a new type. The user can have a posts, and a posts is of type an array of type post. Okay. That's it. Now switch on to data sources. We can see that here. User has a type posts. 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to define this as a data source so that our GraphQL resolver knows that if we ask for a post, make a REST call to uh, this resource. So uh, it's a list. It, it inherited this from the schema. We go under data source, define data source, and then we can just use a predefined example from the one we built. It's close enough. We can see here this is a user's path. And just to match the endpoint, it's users. Uh, user ID slash post. Now, instead of arguments.id, um, this, this data source doesn't actually have an argument. You can see here it doesn't have one. Um, so what we're going to do instead of arguments, we're going to use dot object. Now, what that lets us do is instead of using, um, basically, when you use dot object, you can use any of the fields that were resolved from this current data source. So I could use dot ID, dot name, dot email, dot username. I'm going to use dot ID because that's the user ID that we want to inject into this next call. And then update field. And you can see now this is a post of type rest. So if I go back to uh, our playground, now if I do posts and let's ask for a type here, uh, the user ID and the title and the ID of the post and hit play we can see that it's automatically done for us. Um, I've asked for the user ID, so you can see that's all five, 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 which is great. And here's all the posts that belong to this user. Awesome. Uh, each post has a post ID, okay? And we're now gonna use that post ID for the next chain, and that's for comments, because each post can have a comment. So let's get rid of this, we no longer need that. Now we can see our new comments resource. It takes an argument, a query parameter, which is post ID, um, so, for example, here's the post ID, here's a post ID. Um, let's get the comments for post ID, uh, for any post ID anyway. Let's make it generic. So now we're going to go back to schema. We're going to add a new type. It's called uh, type comment, and a comment can have a post ID and ID. Post ID, which is an ID. A comment ID, which is an ID. It can have a name, an email, and a body, which are all strings. String, name, uh, email, and body, which is a string. Awesome. So um, now we uh, modify our post type because posts can have comments, and that's an array of type comment. Okay. Switch to the data sources. We don't need our, uh, so that's user, that's post. Here's our uh, comment type. That's good. Now for post, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to modify comments field and uh, claim it as a data source. And uh, you know, very, very similar to the post one, I want to make a, a REST call to, uh, to comments. Um, and you can see this resource is comments with a query param post ID. So let's do that. So here's the comments with a query param post ID. And the post ID is, is just going to be the uh, ID field from the posts data source we can see dot id and there it is okay and then update field and there we go now post has a comments uh field and that's a data source of rest which will uh fetch the comments for this post now if we go back to posts we're going to hit um, control space or uh whatever it is on your operating system we see here it will actually help us fill this out and here's our new comments one uh, so now we do comments. I want the uh, post ID. I want the uh, the name, the email, and the body. And fire that off. And there we go. And just like that, uh, we can see the comments. Here's a comments array for this post. And here's a post ID, post ID, all the different comments. And if we scroll down, here's another uh, post here right? Uh, post ID, here's the title of the post, here's the user who submitted the post, and here's all the comments that belong to the post. So just like that, we've seen how easy it is to stitch three different uh, REST resources and uh, combine them into a single uh, graph.